In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and bliss of Allah be upon his last and beloved Major Muhammad, and may the peace and bliss of Allah be upon you all. The title of this presentation is Evolution and Satan. And to know the meaning behind this title and how the connection goes between Satan and evolution, we need to ponder, brothers and sisters, upon the following fact, which is that the main outcome of the theory of evolution is the denying the existence of Allah God. So one main fact we see today, that the main outcome or result from the theory of evolution is the denying of the existence of God. And we see this that the majority of people who believe in evolution, they are atheists. They don't believe in the existence of a creator, a designer for this universe. And this is something that's worth pondering upon. It's something serious. That the main outcome of a theory is not its kind of um, educational kind of outcomes, but it is changing people from believing in God and become, in becoming atheists. People, they don't believe in God. So, in the Quran, in the last revelation of Allah God to people, Allah tells us about this theory and tells us what is the, who invented this theory really and who is behind it. And you will come to realize from this lecture that the cause and the, the one behind this theory is actually Satan. They give the attribute to, they give the uh, credit to Darwin, but as you will see, actually, who invented this theory, the theory of evolution, is actually Satan. And in this lecture, you will see how the connection goes between the evolution and Satan. But to start, I need to explain how does Satan affect each and every one of us, because without this knowledge, it's difficult to understand the connection between evolution and Satan. And this knowledge about how does Satan affect each and every one of us, the majority of people, they are in great ignorance about this. Arabs, um, Americans, uh, European, the majority of people, they are in great ignorance about this topic, how does Satan affect each and every one of us. And in the Quran, Allah God Almighty teaches us how does Satan affect each and every one of us in one verse in the Quran. And that is verse number 4 of chapter 114 of the Quran, which reads, From the evil of the whisperer who hides. From the evil of the whisperer who hides. So Allah God Almighty is telling us from this verse that each and every one of us, there is a Satan who whispers to us, meaning that he talks to you. But Allah tells us in the verse that he, at the same time he hides from you, meaning that he does not want you to feel his presence. He hides from you. So the question now is, how can the companion devil, Satan, of each and every one of us, talk to us, but at the same time hide from us? Now we can learn the answer again from the Quran, which is the following, that we learn that each and every one of us, we have a companion devil, Satan, and we also learn that we have a voice of oneself. And that's the voice you speak with. It's like you're... It's like your fingerprint, it's like your, your audio fingerprint. The, the sound that you make, the, your voice, is your, the voice of yourself. And the same voice you hear in your head when you are thinking quietly to yourself. It's the same voice. So what Satan does is that he matches his voice with regards to tone, frequency, the languages you know, your style of speech, to the one you hear in your head, your own voice. And thoughts pop up in your mind. And you think that yourself is telling you this. Well, actually, it's Satan. And Allah also tells us in the Quran and explains to us the type of thoughts that Satan whispers to you in your mind, which are thoughts of harm to hurt yourself and others, ideas of lust and perverted sexual ideas, and to say about Allah what you have no knowledge of, like giving uh, God sons like Jesus, giving him, uh, saying that uh, God is three in one, and all of these kind of insults towards Allah God Almighty. For example, when you leave your house in the morning and you lock the doors, a voice comes to you in your mind with a voice match the one you think with. 
telling you that you forgot to lock the doors and as a result you will be robbed and you, and uh, this and that will, will happen to you. Now this is Satan. He matches his voice, the one you think with, and you think that you are thinking like this, well actually it's companion devil. Another example, a thought comes to your mind telling you what's the reason for this life Nothing good will happen to me. Why don't I cut myself? Why don't I commit suicide? That's Satan. A thought again comes to your mind telling you, for example, after you wash, that you're not clean enough, go back and repeat many, many times over, that is Satan. I hope now it's clear how does Satan affect each and every one of us. Now, coming back to the topic about evolution and Satan. Now, as I said, it's interesting to note that the main outcome of evolution is the denying the existence of God. That's a very kind of interesting thing to, know, to think about. And if we think about the following verse in the Quran, in chapter 4, verse 119, which reads, Verily, I will mislead them, and surely I will arouse in them false desires, and certainly I will order them to slit the ears of the cattle, and I will order them to change the creation of Allah God. And whoever takes Satan as a helper instead of Allah God has surely suffered a manifest loss. So in this Quranic verse, Allah God is telling us, and I will concentrate on this kind of point, that Satan will order humans to change what Allah God has created. Again, it is stated in this verse that Satan will order people to change what Allah God has created. Now let's think about this. So many people, they read this verse, but who understood it? To understand it, we need to ponder upon it, to think upon it. Um, first of all, there's a rule that no human can change the, how Allah creates creatures or can create on his own. No human can do that. So what's the meaning that Satan will order people to change what Allah God has created? Now, in order to understand this, let's go to evolution. And let's see the evidence for evolution. Because you see, I made so many lectures about the topic of evolution. And one main thing that I get as a response is that people tell me, that we have evidence, we have physical evidence to say that evolution is true. So let's examine this evidence and you'll see how the connection goes between Satan and evolution. Now one main evidence that people bring forward to say that evolution is true is the example or the evidence you see on the screen, which is this, this kind of uh, human skull. And they say that, look, this human skull resembles a human as an, as an ape, a human and a monkey. And so this is like the transitional form or the missing link that this is like a creature who evolved at the end and we are the result of that evolution. So this evidence, if we think deeply about it, some scientists, after this evidence has been presented, looked at the skull, and he did something where there is a technique that they can know the age of bone, how old is this bone. And when he examined this skull, he found that the pieces from the human skull, the upper part, the cranium, dates back to millions of years. But he found that this kind of uh, ape jaw, lower and upper jaw bones, they are only a few years old, meaning a monkey or an ape was dead for one year, two years, three years. So there is no matching between the age of the cranium, which is human, and the age of the ape jaw bones. So, and they discovered that all of this is a hoax. It's a lie that the people that they, they claim to be scientists, what they did is that they put the bones of a human with the bones of an ape or a monkey. So it's all fabricated, all lies. So it's not a real evidence, it's all based on lies and fabrication. So going back to the verse, where Allah states that Satan will order people to change what Allah God has created. And this is a perfect example of that. They, what they did is that Satan whispered to these scientists to, to tell them, look, if you 
produce an evidence for evolution, you'll have money, you'll be famous in the scientific kind of the, in academia. So why don't you do that? So Satan whispered to scientists to fabricate this evidence, evidence all based on lies, and to put these kind of two bones of a, a human and a monkey together. So this is changing what Allah God has created, meaning like distorting what Allah God has created. So we see from this that it is not an evidence, it's all based on lies, it's a hoax. And this applies to all kind of what people claim to be evidence for evolution. They're all lies, fabricated lies. And also they fabricate lies by computer animation, by drawings, to show, for example, a fish having small feet going to land. It's all based on lies, fabrication, guesswork, conjecture. No real evidence for evolution. There is not a single real evidence for evolution. So we see how the connection between evolution and Satan goes. Satan whispers to people how to fabricate evidences and whispers to them to hold tight to this theory. Why? Because one of the main conclusions from this theory it, and one main result of this is the denying the existence of God. And one, that's one ultimate goal of Satan. Now, let's look at the evidence for creation, for the, for creation, the evidence for creation. Of course, in so many of my videos, I showed evidences for, uh, to this end, but here I'll show a quick kind of examples. The one you can see on the screen, here is um, people found some remains of um, bees. For example, they, these kind of um, records, they find them in places where the temperature is very cold, for example, and as thus the remains for these creatures they are maintained for millions of years. So here we have the, the record for a bee, for a honeybee, the one shown on the right, and this is for millions of years. And we can see the design of the bee is exactly the same design for bees we find nowadays. So this design of the honeybee is unchanged throughout time. So this again gives evidence for the fact of creation, that Allah God Almighty created everything in the way we see them today. And this is a real evidence that the record or the remains from these creatures, they, are, they have the same design as the creatures we find today. So there is no evolution, no changing in the design of the creature from one design to another. No evolution, no kind of um, change in the design of a creature. Another example we see here, example of a starfish that on the right, the remains 400 million years, and the one on the left is the starfish we see today, and it has this exactly the same design, no change. So this links with a Quranic verse, the one you see on the screen, verse number 23 of chapter 48 of the Quran, which reads, The way of Allah God that went in the past, and no change you will find in the way of Allah God. Allah, there is no change in His way, in, his, in how He creates creatures. So from the beginning of time, and from the beginning when Allah created Adam, peace upon him, we have the same design. And this shows the oneness of the Creator, and shows that there is only one Creator, one design, one method of design, one design for creatures. And th that there is a Creator, um, a sustainer for everything that, everything in, the, in this creation. So we see, brothers and sisters, the huge kind of uh, difference between the evidences for creation and the supposedly evidences for evolution. And we saw how the connection goes between Satan and what Satan whispers to people with and how he um, uh, orders them to fabricate lies against Allah God Almighty. So please, brothers and sisters, ponder about, upon what I'm saying and realize that Allah God Almighty is the creator and that there is judgment on the day of judgment and please ponder upon the Quran and take the Quran as your book of authority as your reference book and I would like to end this lecture 
with a verse in the Quran telling us what Satan will tell people on the day of judgment. That's verse number 22 of chapter 14 of the Quran which reads, And Satan will say when the matter has been decided, Verily, Allah God promised you a promise of truth, and I too promised you, but I betrayed you. I had no authority over you, except that I called you, and you responded to me. So blame me not, but blame yourselves. I cannot help you, nor can you help me. I deny your former act in associating me as a partner with Allah God. Verily, there is a painful torment for the wrongdoers. And to know more details about this topic, please visit my website at www.quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zquran.yahud.com and may the peace and bless of Allah be upon you all.